Hi, I'm George Pearson, and these are just a few examples from some of the training videos I have here on YouTube. Now, when you're working with the training, following along the training, if you want to get the materials I used in the training, just go to the description down below and click on the link that's at the top of the description, and this will take you to a page where you can download the materials. Please subscribe, click the like button, and of course, always share on Facebook, Twitter, or wherever. I really appreciate that. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the video. In this Photoshop Elements video, we're going to be taking a fun snapshot here and turning it into a much better picture by removing this second person back here where he is not doing anything for the image. Here's the final, what it's going to look like. Let's just hide that. There we go. It'll look like that. Now, the basic concept here is we need to clip out this person and that's going to leave a hole inside the image and of course on that shadow we then need to fill that hole in with information from the rest of the picture so that the person then just disappears now luckily there's a tool inside of Photoshop Elements that will help us do that let me show you how this whole thing is done First, I'm going to just zoom out just a little bit so I can fit this into our window and see what it is we're doing. There we go. Okay, there's the whole picture. I'm just going to zoom in now on just the girl. Back up just a little bit. There we go. Now, the first thing you want to do is you want to make a selection around this figure and around that shadow. We'll do just the figure first. We'll do the shadow second. You don't have to do a perfect selection on this. You can do just kind of a rough selection, but I'll bring it in just a little bit, a little better quality here. And I'm going to come in just outside of the image here, just like that. Just kind of just work my way around. Again, I'm, I'm not going to try to be perfect. I'm not going to be coming right up against the figure itself. I'm just going to be out just a little bit from the figure. Now the tool I'm using is the polygonal lasso tool. And the way you use this is you click and then you can drag the point down and click again that anchors that point. You can then come down and just kind of keep on clicking around the image. Now when you saw that screen move, that was because I brought this over to the edge of the window and then Photoshop Elements automatically scrolls the window for me. So that saves a lot of time. So just go over here, it'll just scroll like that. Okay, let's continue working up along the figure here and again we're going to do a little auto scroll right there let's move it up against the ruler or against the edges you can see what we're doing and continue working just around the figure just kind of close in again not being too accurate but I want to be relatively close I don't want to be you know, taking up too much of the outside around the image Okay, let's come back around and find your starting point. Now, it's kind of hard to see here, but when you find the starting point, a little circle will happen right next to the little cursor. If you don't see that, if you can't find that circle, just double click. And Photoshop Elements will automatically make that last little segment for you. Okay, there we go. Now, I never like to work on my original image. I always say that as a background layer. So I'm just going to copy this layer. Drag it up here, make a new layer. There you go, we'll work on this copy of that. I'll just hide that background. Okay, so we have a selection now, and it's around the image. Now, I could just delete this, leaving a hole, and then do some cut and paste and clone stamp tools just to kind of fill it in. That's one way to do it, but it takes a long time. Let's just first let Photoshop Elements do its magic and then we'll go back in and we'll adjust that afterwards where the, any little problems are showing. Now the tool you want to use is up here under the Edit menu and Fill Selection. Let's just bring this up. Now in here, there's a great little option. Normally it'll say foreground color, which is whatever you have right down there. Right now mine's kind of a dark brown. It'll normally say that where you can do the background color or choose a color or fill it with a pattern or use a black or a white or a gray but the one we want is right here this one content aware that's the cool tool now come down to the bottom section make sure the blending mode is set to normal 
and opacity is set to 100%. They probably already are, but just double check those. What this does is, it's going to fill this selection with information from around the selection. It will try to make a good blend for us. We're going to have to go in and do some tricks to improve this once this is done, but this will save us a lot of work and a lot of time. Okay, so I'll click on OK. I'll let Photoshop Elements do its magic here, and there we go. Look at that. It's just absolutely beautiful. Our, our edge is looking real nice here. The tree looks good. There are some little problems, as I said. There's a hand or a foot or something showing right there. We'll fix that. And down here looks pretty good. That matches nicely. And then we have our shadow left. Okay, so we can now deselect this. So let's just do select and deselect. Let's do it one more time on this problem area here. I'm just going to make a little selection right around this one bit. And double click to close. There we go. Again, same thing. Fill selection. Content aware. Choose OK. And let it fill that out. OK, it's not quite getting rid of that, so I'll we'll have to do that the hard way with a clone stamp tool. That's fine. Now notice we have these little water jump things in here. Some are now missing. We'll want to come back and we'll want to fix some of that. That'll be a later step. We'll need to fix this little edge right there. That's not a big deal. A little bit of an edge problem in there. That's an easy fix. And just a few more of those little touches. But first, let's get rid of this shadow down here. We'll use the exact same trick. I'll just come in. I'm going to do it in just a few steps here. Let's just come around and make a selection around this first part. Same thing. Edit, Fill Selection, Content Aware, Choose OK. There we go. Let's come down a little bit and we'll do this again. The reason I'm going into in smaller steps here is it's a little bit easier for elements to figure out how to fill a smaller selection than it is a bigger selection. Okay, Edit, Fill Selection, Choose OK. There we go. That one's done. Just moving on down. I'll do this in just two pieces and then that's going to be okay. Not oh, clicked too many times there. Okay, just go ahead and finish that off. There we go. Edit, fill selection, choose okay, same thing. And we'll finish it off with this little bit right here. Okay, and then edit, fill selection, content aware, and there it goes. Okay, we've taken care of those the main image. Let's now fix the problems. Our first problem, as you can see right here, a couple of dark spots in here where her legs were. We can fix that again with the Content Aware Fill. I'll just come right around that. You can go off the image done if you want to. That's okay. Edit Fill Selection. Let's see how well that does. That's good. Just get rid of that. And once more for this little section here. There we go. Edit, Fill Selection, Content Aware, and OK. All right, that looks good. Now, let's look at our little problem areas. For these, we're going to be using the Clone Stamp tool to do a little more careful adjustment. Now, we can't obviously put in exactly what's missing because there's nothing in there. There's no information behind where her figure is. So we're going to be copying information from elsewhere to kind of fake that. So we'll be using the clone stamp tool right there and let's just adjust the size. You can adjust the size right there. You can see there's the size and have my set at of, oh, about 50 or so. Opacity at 100 and I'll start by just grabbing over here. Now when you use the clone stamp tool you hold the alt key down and click on a spot and then you can move that spot over so you can kind of see it right there. What you want to do is you want to find a line. They can move that line over, then match that line up. That will help things just disappear. Okay, I'm going to take a bit of this bush and put it right there. And that hides that, and we'll fix that area. Okay, that's good. Let's copy a bit right here and stick it over here. Just like that. That hides that little bit. We want to get this bit fixed up in here. I'm going to copy from right there. And we'll just kind of match up that edge. And that fills in that line. That's pretty good. Everything else looks all right. Let's just double check up here. I think we're okay in this area. 
if you want to, you can, you know, grab a, a little bit of stuff and kind of come in and do a little bit of touch up in here just to make things look a little bit more interesting. It was too dark and stuff. Let's just bring a little bit of additional lightness in there still from over here. You know, just kind of cleaning things up a bit. Maybe that's a bit too bright back there. I'm going to steal a little bit of this and just kind of cover up whatever that is. Okay, now let's look at our water in here. I'm going to zoom out. Hold the Alt key down on the zoom tool. We have all these water spray things happening in here. But we've lost them right here. And we've lost them right here. This is where her figure was. So we lost a little bit of that spray in there. I want to bring a little bit of that back in. I can copy from over here and put it over here. And if we're careful about that, it won't really be obvious what it is we're doing. First, I'm going to copy this bit here, and then I'll get rid of that center section. So back to the clone stamp, and I'll come right in the middle of that, maybe right to the top of this second bit here. I'll click right there. I'll bring that right on top of this other one right there. And I'm just going to kind of follow that water around. And I know that there was another one right there. It is. I'll follow that one around. And it gives us a bit of those loops over in here. Now I messed up that edge. We'll fix that in just a second. I'll see right here there's a little bit of... This line was kind of cut off right there. I want to extend that and I want to extend that. I can do that by steathing a bit of the water from over in here. Should be okay. Maybe this one's a little bit better. It's hard to say exactly where it's going to be perfect on that, but I'll take, you know, I'll, I'll do this one just a little bit of that one right there. Okay, clone stamp. So you have to kind of decide where you want to steal from and then copy over to to try to make things look natural. There we go. Just a little bit of that place right there it gives me that loop. Now, by putting in these little water loops, it helps confuse the eye and it thinks, okay, there, there mustn't have been anything in here because I can see the water loops. That's the whole idea behind doing this one step. I'm going to take that little bit right there and just stick that over here. Just grab the top of that. I'll click and I'll put that top right in here and I'll do just a little bit of this. It's me a little water loop right there. So again, the eye says if I can see something here, there couldn't have been anything in front of that. Now I want to have a little bit of water in here. I have a bit right there I can use. I can copy that bit. So same thing. I'm going to clone. So let me just zoom in a little bit, make it a little bit easier to see what it is I'm talking about here. So that about a bit of water right down there. I'm going to copy that and put it on the edge of this one so I can get some water happening in this area. So again, grab the clone stamp tool and I'll start right about there. And alt click. Let's just bring that here. Now, notice that we're off the pavement, so I want to bring that in. I'll have to come in and make some adjustments still. As you can see, there's a little bit of problems in there. We can fix that, but I want to get that water in there first. Okay, now the part down here, I can just hide this. Just copy from here, clone step over there. If, if the water disappears at that point, that's okay. I want to fix that, so I'll copy here, and that's just clone stamp right there. There's a little bit of a problem on that edge you know, where the water disappears for a second, nobody's going to think anything about that. Don't worry about that. Okay, right here, I need to fix that little bit right there. I think I'm going to copy from right over here, and let's just work that edge in. That works out pretty well. Okay, I want a little bit of water right there, and maybe a little something in here that I think we're okay on the water. Let's just see where I can copy from. I can get a bit right in here. So I'll copy right at that point. I'll click and just bring that right over to there. Now I need to again fix that edge a little bit, but that gives me the water in there. And once again, a little clone stamp here. A little clone stamp. We're just kind of touch that up. That gives me a bit of the water there, which I want. That's good. Okay, so we're just kind of putting stuff in, putting in detail in the background to confuse the eye as to what's actually happening. And there's a little bit of this nice bit of water right here. I can, I can bring that in and just stick it over here as well. So I'll just do that. I'll copy right from that line and I'll bring that over here. 
that kind of looks like this is now continuing down there. So the eye just kind of finds these things and follows them. And even if they're not connected, the eye will go ahead and connect that for us. So it does the a lot of that work for us. All right, let's just take a look through and see how else this is any of the problems in here. I think we're okay. So a little bit of water thing there. That's fine. That's fine. Now on images like this, when you have a big obvious foreground in there, that's really very helpful because the eye is going to be looking at that and not looking over in here where we just did some of our, our fudging of this image. But there we go. I think we have that pretty well. I think nobody's going to be looking at this stuff here. They're going to be looking at the figure flying over the top. Now the last thing we want to do maybe is to try to maybe sharpen the face up just a little bit in here. It looks pretty good, but we can do a little bit of a sharpening, maybe make the picture look just a little bit better. We'll go over here and we'll click on this. We have three tools over here, the blur tool, the smudge tool, and the sharpen tool right there. I'll take the sharpen tool. Brush size right now is set at 83. That's probably pretty good. I'm just going to click it a couple of times in here. Just kind of tapping the image with that. Now it's, what it's doing is it's increasing the edge contrast of those pixels and it gives the effect of it being more in focus. So anywhere where it's a little bit out of focus, I can come in and just do just some little taps, just, you know, a couple of taps. And it looks like we're back in focus again. And that makes it, again, look a little bit nicer, a little bit nicer picture. Now the last little thing I noticed is a, a little bit of a spot right there. A couple of three spots on the leg, probably just some dust or something. We can hide that again with the clone stamp tool. Let me bring the size of the clone stamp tool down a lot. And I'll copy from right there and click over that. Or we can use the healing brush tool here as well. And just click on that spot. Now sometimes you can see the healing brush might not do a great job. It depends. So you can try one or the other. And one of them will give you the job that you want. Okay, there we go. I think we've got it. I think we have now cleaned our picture up by taking out that second figure and leaving us with a very interesting action shot. Let me just float this again and a little larger image in here. Bring that up. And there we go. So there is the, the picture cleaned up, having removed that secondary person using just some real fast, easy techniques. Let's look at the original again. There's, so there's the original and there's our repair. Original and repair. And as you can see, pretty straightforward. It's really just a matter of going through and using that content aware fill to get rid of the image and then doing a few tricks to kind of clean things up just to confuse the eye so that it doesn't even look over there. It just takes it for granted that that's all okay and then focuses on our image. So there you go. That's how to remove a person out of a picture. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this training video.